Hey guys, Seth with Marion County Public Library again. I'm back with another origami video. This time we're going to be folding a Russian MIG. It's an interesting fold. You have some models here. Two different styles. So what you're going to start with here is you're going to start with a base fold. It's a triangle, but the inside is uh, folded out like a hollow. I'll show you how to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to take your, your paper and I want the colorful side to be the inside of my MIG, like so, you can see. And it'll make these nice little points right here be colorful. So what you want to do is you want to take whatever side you want on the inside, and that's how you're going to fold it. So I'm folding mine to where the neat pattern side is on the inside of my fold. So now I can see that the outside is all blue. And I'm going to do this again, like so. So as you can see. I folded it long ways to make a rectangle and then folded it again to make another square. Now this is where the fold gets tricky. You're going to take it and then open it up like so. And you're going to want to press it to make a triangle out of the paper. This can get kind of tricky because as you can see I'm having problems here. You don't want it to make a, an edge here. You want it to be a spike like a triangle. Now while folds and origami are never perfect, that's a good lesson you should remember. As you can see, I still have a tiny little edge there. But like I said, folds are never perfect. Now you see you have a triangle and a square here. You're going to flip it over like so. And you're going to have a like a weird shape. And you're going to do the same thing as before and fold it like a triangle. As I said, you can see folds are never perfect. I'm having trouble making a point. You just have to, a lot of times you have tools like scissors where you can kind of stick it in. You just have to be careful not to cut your paper. Now you can see, just like this one, I have a hollow point. So now, while I often don't like using scissors in origami, this, this fold requires cuts. So what you're gonna do, you see, you have your triangle. You're going to take it on both sides here. Now this is important on your fold. Always remember this when you're folding these. The further away from the center you cut is how thick or thin, thick or thin, your cockpit here is going to be. See I cut these ones closer to the center. So this one became thin and I cut this one further away from the center. So now it's thick. So in this particular one, I'm going to cut it thicker. So I'm going to cut further away. And then just to make sure your cut is accurate, I like to take, uh, say, another piece of paper and I put it across my cut so I know where across I'm going to cut. See, now while not entirely even, it doesn't always matter. Now this is another tricky fold. On the inside, you should open it up and see that you have these cuts. We'll open one corner and you're gonna take it and you're gonna, you're gonna open up this hole, see? Right, and then you're gonna bend the paper down to make a triangle of color. And that's how you're gonna get these points. And you do this for all four sides. And another big part of this fold is the further down you cut on your paper is how big these tips are going to be. As you can see, these ones are longer than these ones because I cut further down into the paper. And you fold it back. And that's what it should look like. Now, as I've only folded this a couple times, I do need a book for instructions. 
So you're going to take, okay, so instructions in 2D are kind of hard to read. This is why I like learning from videos. But this one being not that difficult, you just take your, uh, your wings here and you fold them over. on both sides. Having trouble here. Folds can't always be so easy. Such as the fold I showed you before with the fish. That was uh, what one might call an amateur fold. This I'd say is more intermediate. But you fold it on both sides. And you're gonna fold it back again. But keep in mind, when you're folding this time, you're going to cut it in half, like this. So rather than folding all the way back, you take this center part here, like this, and you should have a fold that goes down the middle. On both sides. Right. So then once again, you're gonna fold this side. The, you can recognize the sides because there should be a slant on a fold right here. And you're gonna fold this at this line here. And you should get like a double mountain side on both sides. Then once again, you're going to fold same ways. So for this time, see there, you're going to fold shortly before the tip of the mountain. Another thing you have to keep in mind when you're folding origami is it's never going to be the same. That's one thing that's huge. So now you have these two sides and then you're going to take these and you're going to fold these. Up. So what you're going to have is when you fold these two pieces back again, you're going to have a line where your fold is. And you're going to take your second piece, your second mountain, and fold it over the, the first mountain. Like so. And you should, what you have left is what looks like a standard paper airplane with nothing uh, above. And now what you're going to do after you do that is take that same mountain you just folded and fold it. You should, when you fold it back over, you should see this, the edge of the first one. And you're going to fold it like so to where it's a split between the two, a crease on both sides. And this is the image you should get. Now what you're going to do after that is you're going to take the bigger of the two and you're going to fold it at the tip in half. And then when you do that, you're once again going to fold shortly before the tip. And in, in, in an instance like this, because we've cut and made these folds, you're going to have to press on the colorful bit. Or in your case, if you're not using origami paper such as mine, it's just the color of the other side of the paper. It is helpful to use double-sided paper like this, though. And you're going to make two paper bits like that. And then once again, this is a tricky fold. You're gonna, you have these two wings. You're gonna take the inside and you're gonna fold this bit right here in half to make your jet engines. So then once again, once you folded that, all you should have left is nothing on top. So then, this is an unnecessary fold. It isn't really needed in the fold. You're gonna take this part right here that is the connected to the tip and you're just going to fold it up on both sides. 
Like I say, this is an unnecessary fold. It either way, the plane looks cool with or without that fold. But the the instructions do recommend it. So now this is what you have. And you're gonna rotate it, and you're gonna take your wings, these two, you're gonna take the top one and fold it directly up on both sides. So this is a, roughly what you should have by now. Like I said, no two folds are ever the same. So what I may be folding, yours may be slightly different. You may have a thicker fold or a thinner fold. But after you fold these two wings up, you're going to do the same for the bigger. Except for when you do that, rather than just letting it fall, you're going to fold it back down. So you should get a build like this. And you're gonna once you do that, you're gonna fold this back down as well, and then do the same for the other side. And there you have a Russian MIG. Now again, this is a different style. Like I said, two, no two folds are ever gonna be the same. But as you can see from the front view, this is what it should look like. You have your two points, same as these. You have your, your four points in total, and you have your wings. There's the back of you. And always, you should be able to open it up. And that's your Russian MIG. Uh, well, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Don't forget to like. And I will be making a video shortly about how the, the 10 basic folds or so. And like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment and have a great day. We are springing into summer learning at the Chattahoochee Valley Libraries, and the program you just attended is one of the ways you can earn completions. Just go to cvlga.org and look for Spring into Summer Learning. You can register yourself and your family online, and then start reading and attending our online events. That's all you have to do. We're giving away weekly gift certificates, and every completion you make enters you into a grand prize drawing for tablets, games, gifts, and more. Remember, you have to register to win. CVLGA.org, and we'll see you online again real soon.